confetti club, it is Pixie, and I am reporting to you from a new and unidentified location, which is what today's video is all about. But at this point in time, it is January 2020, and the winter blahs have hit me. I'm saying it. I'm like trying real hard with all my mindfulness and all my good vibes and all my goodness, but the world, my friends, is literally monochrome this time of year, and it's hard for me when I need everything around me to be this color to be sane. And because it is so sad and gray and just desolate outside, I decided what better a time than to create and build a sparkly new YouTube set inside of my home where I can control the hue of things. There's a wriggly little rag doll boy here, hello. Is this a stupid way of filming it? Showing the finished product in the intro? I don't know. I thought it would be fun to just kind of have this video be a welcoming, a ceremonial hello to our new little YouTube home. Um, I won't be filming every single video here. I do like to float around my house and like if it's an anime video, film in front of my anime stuff and like if it's a fashion video, film in like my little fashion corner. Um, but this is going to be my set area where I can just sit down, the lights are in the walk-in closet, I get home from school and it's like kah, 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 which is the other reason I'm doing this. Being in college and January sadness and all of this stuff is making it difficult again for me to stay on top of getting those like bi-weekly videos. Pa, 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 pa. So I thought, if I can arrange my environment to make it just streamlined and a quicker process, and it's not like I get home and I have to like unplug all the crap from the outlet and like clean and like, you know, remove the cat hair from the couch, this. <laughs> I'm trying to make life easier for myself by just having a, a set place that's always prepared for me to sit down and film. I'm really, really happy with it. I'm not gonna lie, I'm probably looking at myself in the viewfinder a lot because this is my first time ever filming in front of the set and I'm like so happy with it. I feel like it really is like exactly what I had in my brain. I will show you guys actually. Um, I did some initial little sketchy sketches which are probably took like 30 seconds and are very rough. But honestly, I can't I think I think I achieved my vision low key. And I did vlog and time lapse the whole creation of this beautiful confetti club nation. And I'm also pretty proud of myself because I actually only purchased two things for all of this. Everything else I already owned or was gifted or was like sent in the mail or something. Um, and those two things I purchased were these like base record crates and the paint to paint them. So yay, I didn't even have to go like blow a bunch of money on decorations and crap. I just scavenged through my home. So I did head down to my local Canadian tire and picked up three record crates. They were also on sale. <laughs> this is like the most <laughs> budget way to make yourself a shell. But I really like it and also it is kind of budget hours, you know, your girl's in college now, you know, she's watching her money So we bought three record crates and painted them and and that's our shelf. It's thrifty locks hours Oh, I still want a plant. I still want to get some sort of resident plant to probably go here um, But I just haven't gotten that yet because it's winter and you know the good the gardening centers aren't quite as flourishing right now So I took them crates home. I busted out that paint and I painted me some record crates um, The blue one I initially just took the paint and used it straight out of the jar It was called deep turquoise Why did my sweet little brain not realize it's literally as deep in the name it turned out like deep turquoise. So I did actually go back, mix that paint with a ton of white to dilute it, and made it this like happier little baby blue color, which I think is, oh my god, just so much better. It changes the whole vibe. Once they were dry, I just stacked them up. Here's these, and I went through my home and scavenged for objects <laughs> that I thought were sentimental and aesthetic and represented me, like things I wanted in my background. 
All right, so I have done a little scavenger hunt amongst my house, and I have arranged some pertinent objects. I may or may not have also made a very chaotic Google Doc um, of pertinent objects trying to plan what the hell I'm going to actually put in my set. I have the happy, happy blue uh, crate drying now. He is no longer so deep. So hashtag deep, we keep it light and fluffy here. And I'd like to give you a little tour before we, ow, oh, or I could just die. So there's some things here that are kind of representative of just like my overall vibe, my overall like inside jokes over the years and branding and like phases I've gone through and stuff. So these are actually, uh, I think pencil cases. I got these at a Canadian dollar store and I love them. This is the original sandwich, the peep, um, coming back to live with us forevermore. We have some of these extremely happy flower friends, which are a big part of my new 2020 branding just because I'm fucking obsessed with them. <laughs> and Chris, the automaton from back in the live stream days when my streams used to be public and weekly and oh my God, how did I have the energy for that? This absolutely fantastic flower light. It's actually a solar powered garden light thing. My mom got it for me from Ikea for Christmas and I just freaking love it so much. So I'm gonna find a way to like, yeah, he's gonna live here. Oh, he's too iconic not to. This is just a thrift store find that I've had for like so, so, so many years. I love him. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna use this or not. This is some extra like iridescent streamery stuff that I used to use in my old background. I might put it up on like that part of the wall, but not the whole thing. I don't, I don't think I want the entire thing to be just like, you know, plastic that's not overly my vibe but it is something i've had for years and years in my basement we have some very important general craft representation i don't actually like know how to do anything with yarn but it looks so damn cute i got this from a project i think it was the little pennant i made steve for our anniversary last year but they're just so stinking cute and um i do use pin cushions all the time but this is an extra and if i lose the other one i can just run and grab it it's fine this is one of my favorite hi <gasps> Hello, very dirty mirror. This is one of my favorite Polly Pocket items I own. My sweet friend Kenzie gave it to me. I could get lost for hours and I often do. Not often, oh my God, oh, that's where all my time goes. I'm just hanging out in this tiny world with this tiny little cactus. Ah, anyway, okay, so yes, I find objects like this, old Polly Pockets and like intricate miniatures just so, so beautiful. And I, I don't know, I've just always been obsessed, especially when they have little moving parts like this and the flower knobs and the fact that it, you know, just, you know, becomes that. Okay, let's not talk about this the entire time. Here we have my like shoutsy, outsy slash people I wanna support slash that sort of thing section. Um, this actually, well, this is just a book, but K-Club definitely want to have K-Club representation. I love K-Club and Callie and all of that that is going on. And of course, that's me right there. Body Positive Power by Megan Jane Crab. She actually sent this to me as like a sweet little thing. And Megan, I've said this a million times, but she's really, really, really helped me in my eating disorder recovery and I just love looking at her sweet smiling face on this book cover every day. It's been over my office desk for like ever, but I think it deserves to be public for the world. And this is the first gift that Sebastian Masada actually gave me whenever he came to the New York meet and greet situation um, where I was seen looking like this and I literally had a panic attack. So I also did a whole video on that. I feel like that was like one of the craziest moments of my life. So anyway, I love that story and I like to remember it by keeping this sweet friend around. Hello. And I hope this friend fits in somewhere cause I just absolutely love this bear bag by my sweet friend Bianca who runs Miss Candy Holic. Um, she does amazing designs. She is such a talented seamstress and designer and Nina agrees. 
Oh, and this is a Barbie that someone mailed to me when I used to have an open P.O. box that freaking looks like me. Oh my god, I was cleaning out my closet, trying to find some like sentimental objects for this, and I found a sentimental object, and I'm just so, 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 so happy. Some things just kind of got like lost in the move, and um, she's been recovered. And this is like my current plan for my magical girl representation. Y'all know I am a big magical girl dweeb. It is all I think about, all I dream about, all I want to be and aspire for in life. So I need some very, very good representation of my immaculate taste. This is like one of my favorite figures I own and I just think she's so beautiful and the moon is so pretty and she is such an iconic magical girl. So people who may not necessarily know what magical girl anime is all about, maybe that will help them understand that, hey, guess what, all this other she, she she's part of it. This is a controversial moment, but I looked through all of my candy figures and stuff and decided that Cure Cosmo is going to be representing my Precure love. She's spectacular, she's cyan blue, she has piggy tails with little pink streaks. I don't think they have pink streaks in this figure because it's like, you know, these are like the $4 figures. I, just, I love her rainbows, I love her attitude, I love her little tongue sticky outy when she does her transformation. I'm obsessed with Cure Cosmo and I want her to be with me every day. This is the Peppetto Toporon from Ojimato Doremi, which is one of my other favorite magical girl animes and is the big uh, thigh tattoo on my uh, thigh. So this is the current state of things. My bunting has been made. I'm going to hang it for you. I'm going to hang up, I think, the glittery stuff on that little stripy strip of wall like there. And oh my god, hopefully that will be dry soon. I will give it the cheeky touch test. And we're gonna get some building. This is actually gonna start looking like a set. Arranging things on a shelf is one of life's greatest pleasures. My grandma, if you go to her house, there is not a shelf that is not so aesthetically and beautifully curated. It's just, I think it's a gene. It's just so fun. So I definitely, these shelves will probably continue to be rearranged and toyed with. I already have shuffled some things around since even filming this portion. Again, I think I'm gonna add a planty friend, but I really like having a shelf in my YouTube set because I feel like I can add little things as I go through life, like if, as I maybe collect like souvenirs and trinkets and special things along my tubing journey. I also cooked up some Yi signature bunting for this. Uh, bunting is actually what you call like streamers of triangles. I feel like everyone I've met, when I say bunting, they don't know what I'm talking about. It's this, this beautiful shit that I just want to tattoo as a chest piece. And I was gonna go out and buy scrapbooking paper and then I realized I have like such a thick stack of rainbow cardstock that I use for school for little quarter scales and stuff. So I just used that and I cut me some triangles. I did a little time-lapse situation of this in case you guys didn't know how easy it is to make your own bunting. You can go get any paper you could ever dream of. I love picking out fun papers, but this time I just use solid colors because I thought, you know, in a YouTube background, it probably wouldn't read very well if there were like microscopic cherries and gingham and stuff. And then I just use a little baby hole puncher. I have this special tiny hole one, but you can totally use a regular hole hole puncher. And I just wove some twine through them and strung them up. I also did end up hanging up that iridescent curtain. I just chopped a little section of it because I have a walk-in closet door, rot her. I kind of like playing around with it, like draping over things. Like, is this just, is this too much? I don't know. Um, I like having fun. I wish I could just always wade through streamers of these, but again, not sustainable at all. This was just something I owned before, um, and I will probably never throw it out because holy shit, it's just strings of thin plastic. Oh my god. <laughs> I've been going through so much, like, <laughs> things that I can't have anymore, but it's worth it. <laughs> you streamers. Anyway, they're, they're, they're cute. They're cute where they are now not in a landfill. I have this amazing little like, baby, baby grand piano. This was a gift from my mom for Christmas of 2017. I love this freaking baby piano so much. 
Um, but it doesn't get a ton of use because, uh, you know. I have a proper piano downstairs, but I got it purely for the aesthetic, and I literally knew one day I wanted to have it in, like, I just, I, I imagined it on, like, a TV set, like a YouTube TV set situation. This has been displayed in my living room with, like, I had like a pile of pianos. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I like to collect miniature piano things. And now he lives up here to be a, a special, special friend of his own. You're not gonna see him in every shot like in this video. You can't see him cause uh, the, the bottom of my outfit's dumb. But I really like having him here. Also to host this cake cat bed. Um, I hope, I hope, I hope the cats, cause I know the cats like to climb on this piano anyway. I can tell because I hear their little footsies stepping in such a beautiful uh, melodic way. So I have put this cat bed here in hopes that maybe one day when I'm filming a video we'll, we will be blessed by a sweet background cat friend. And I have this happy little flower that my mama got me from Ikea. I feel like this placement might be incredibly weird and stupid. I literally like nailed it to the wall, but um... I don't know, I have this bunny covering up how extremely weird that looks. It, that might get moved, but right now I feel like as it peeks over my shoulder, it looks okay. I don't know. Currently I just have like a blue kitchen chair from Ikea. This literally, we got a set of four for our kitchen table, but we keep the kitchen table up against a wall. So there's only two chairs at it anyway. Um, one's in the basement in like our little workshop area. And this one's up here now. Um, I also hope, I hope that like a video game, I can one day level up this chair to be like a beautiful confetti throne. But again, budget thrifty longs hours. I'ma use this kitchen chair for now. One day I'll get a beautiful like Victorian tufted throne. But I don't know, would that even suit this? <laughs> I did also make curtains. I made two little sweet gingham panels out of this flannelette fabric. Um, I wanted the curtain to be part of the set in the way that I kind of have it here. Just so you can see the happy flower friend. Literally just cause I'm obsessed with the happy little flowers and I want him to be present. These are everywhere in my home on the curtains and I just want I want them to be seen in every video I want you to know that you can have happy little flower friends holding your curtains too because it has greatly augmented my life and here we are how do we feel obviously it is like nighttime so I'm hoping sometimes I can film with some beautiful natural light as well but maybe I'll do some paparazzi footage I will insert here of the lighting setup just so you know it's you know feels like a YouTube set I'm really, really happy and really excited and I feel like this is really gonna help cause I need to be able to film and do school in one day. And when I have to stop and like clear an area and haul in the lights from another room and set everything up and then the sun goes down, you know, I really think that this is going to be helpful for me in my productivity, so. Yay! This video's Future Confetti Club member is Flustershy on Instagram, who honestly made my middle school, high school dreams come true in this amazing My Little Pony fan art rendition of me. I lost it zooming into this. I did enjoy, I watched, I, I was a big Pegasister for several years, and then I just, I think I fell off the show in like season five. I don't know why. I, just, I definitely enjoyed My Little Pony and of. <laughs> No shame in saying that. I watch Precure. I love kids TV. Uh, this is exactly how I would want to be in the My Little Pony universe. Okay, Jennifer in the mane and the bunting and the tattoo and I'm gonna do we have to oh the crayons and there's pins in my hair which is sparkly and I, oh and the smiling flower in my hair. It's just like I love it so much. I love it so much. Thank you for this. It is like, <laughs> you made a dream come true. I love you guys all so, so much, and I'll see you in the next video, which is not this one, because this one is over. Bye!